What's going on, my fellow Caspians? This is James Allen, and I'm back for another Caspa video. And I'll be honest, I did not think I'll be back here so soon. I did not think I'll be making another Caspa video for maybe another month or so. But sure enough, a week went by, and I'm here recording another Caspa video. And it's totally unexpected, because if you remember, in the last video I did, I came with the conclusion that although Caspa is an engineering marvel, because it proves that proof of stake can scale, I have to pass on it because I need a smart contract rich environment for what I'm doing with Cityscape. Cityscape being my dApp that's already published on the App Store and have active players already. And I was looking at Caspa as one of the blockchain for Cityscape and said, you know, it looks great, especially as a layer one, but I need smart contracts. So I'm going to pass. You know, you could watch that video if you remember. <laughs> I just published it last week. And here I am today saying, hmm, maybe I should use Casper as the layer one for street cred. So how did that come about? First of all, I did not expect to be back here. Uh, and this shows that, like, I'm learning with you. This is a genuine experience I'm sharing. I'm not claiming to be a guru. I'm just an entrepreneur, developer, building a Web3 application with a token and need a blockchain to do what I need to do. So this is just a genuine developer person sharing his experience. And I want to walk you through the story of what led me back to Casper. But before I get into that, I want to mention something that's been harped about in the last video. That is, a lot of people have been saying, hey, you know, Casper's transaction per second is much higher than what you say. In fact, uh, one person said uh, Casper has a CPS of 5584, something like that, 5500 transactions per second. Someone told me in a comment section is Casper's true CPS. And I want to look it up and I did find sources to support that. But here's the problem. These are stress tests, guys. Like these are performance tests by engineers where they rent out machine clusters and simulate traffic to test to, to assess the network. The, this is not real world <laughs> throughput, guys. This is uh, this is a theoretical max at best. This is a theoretical max at best. But Real world throughput is going to be very different, right? Because the real world is much more chaotic. It's, it's not as uniform, right? It's not as controlled. So I cannot use these tests as the TPS metrics for Casper. If you really want to know what Casper's TPS is currently, go look at Casperlytics dashboard. They have a dashboard where you could see its uh, daily average or something like that. And I think like if you do the math, you end up with something like a few hundred transactions per second. I hate to disappoint you guys. It's, I'm not saying <clears throat> Casper does not have a high TPS. It certainly does, especially based on those stress test performance we're seeing. But that's not the same thing as real world usage, man. And, and that has yet to be determined. But it does show one point. This high result from the test does show one point. That is, Casper is not waiting on technology. It's waiting for adoption. It's waiting for entrepreneurs and developers to give it real use case with real people in the real world. And hopefully I can be one of those entrepreneurs that put my dap on Caspa and have real people use the blockchain and we'll see what the real throughput is. But do not use these test numbers to correct me, guys. Like, like come on, you should know better than that. Anyway, let's get back to the point. How did I end up back here? How did I end up you know, one week later saying, hmm, maybe I should put street cred on Casper. Well, let me tell you the story. Last week, I was, uh, I eventually faced, I faced a problem that I think all Web3 de developers will eventually face. Last week, I was dealing with a problem that I think every Web3 developers will face at some point. That is, is your currency going to be a coin or is it going to be a token, Right. Uh, I'm going to say that one more time. At some point, a Web3 developer or entrepreneur will ask themselves, do I want to make my currency a coin or do I want to make it a token? And they have to reach a decision before they choose a blockchain because some blockchains are built for tokens and some blockchains are built for coins, right? So it's a choice you must make before you choose a particular chain because once you choose a chain, you're, you're limited by what that chain can do. And in developer term, this translates to, do I use UTXO or do I use the account model? That's really the developer translation of this question. Do I use UTXO or do I use the account model? If you're an entrepreneur watching this, shout out to my entrepreneurs. 
this question translates to you as an entrepreneur is do I want my coin to behave like cash or do I want to create a digital bank account, right? A digital bank. Do I want to create digital cash or do I want to create digital bank? Now, I'm not going to get too in depth into the difference between UTXO and account model. I'm going to do a separate developer tutorial on that. If you guys want me to, just let me know in the comment section, but I'll give a brief explainer. UTXO stands for unspent transaction output, unspent transaction output. And when you're when you choose that model, your currency behaves like digital cash. Each coin is treated as its own distinct isolated object. So when you pay someone uh, using a coin that's based on UTX, so it's kind of like you're giving them cash, like you're handing them a $20 bill and that token is that coin is burned, right? The person gets paid and you get um, uh, the change. That's the output, right? But each coin is an isolated object. And because each coin is an isolated object, thousands of transactions can be done in parallel, right? So UTX show is, um, uh, is, is it allows for parallel transactions because everything is a distinct object, right? It's also more secure, right because um uh, everything is a distinct object again so like you know it's it's much harder to track people if the coin is on a utxo chain now let's look at <clears throat> the account model the account model is like a shared bank database right it's like a, a, a you know you have a smart contract which is the coin and the smart contract has a state and these states are updated based on a user transaction. So there's a shared global state in the account model. Now, this is an easier environment for developers to write code against. It's better for development, it's more intuitive, but it does create problems in a way, right? Because you could have race conditions, you could have bottlenecks because everyone's trying to access the same global um, state and account model chains, they're tracked more easily. Like I said, if you go with the account model, you're, you're creating a digital bank, not a digital cash, which is what you would create if you go with UTXO. Now, given that my app's currency, street cred, is a currency for the streets, and the streets are raw and untamed, I had to go with cash, guys. I mean, come on, come on. Like, you know, this is the streets, man, you know? So I had to go with digital cash. So. Given that, okay, street cred is the currency of the street, so it has to behave like cash. So now I'm stuck with UTXO. So what are the UTXO chains? Well, you have Bitcoin, you have Cardano, you have Ergo, and you have Casper. These are like the major um, uh, UTXO chain. Bitcoin, Cardano, Ergo, Casper. Bitcoin does not is, is, is not realistic for my use case. You know, I can't really use Bitcoin for my use case, so we could dismiss that right off the bat. Ergo is really smart, really intelligent people behind it, but no cultural literacy. And I already went through that with ICP, where you're dealing with a chain that's, you know, culturally illiterate. Uh, I did an episode on how Definity uses billboard advertising. If you don't believe me, take a look at that episode. Like, they have no EQ, and I don't want to deal with that again, you know, and I also think Ergo is not as good as Casper. We'll get into that later, but, you know, we could knock out Bitcoin and Ergo right off the bat. You know, Bitcoin is not realistic, and Ergo, there's no, there's, there's no culture behind it, so I'm not going to use a chain like that. So that really leaves us to Casper and Cardano. Those are the realistic choices if you're going to go with UTXO, and now we could get a little bit more technical, right? We could get a little bit more cutthroat. If you look at the transaction per second, Casper's magnitude faster than Cardano. Magnitude faster. Um, uh, we could say Casper has a TPS. I'll be generous. We could say Casper has a TPS of a thousand per second, even though we know based on a stress test, it's, it could be much higher than that. But let's be generous and just say, let's be modest and say, okay, Casper has a TPS of a thousand, even though we know it could do more. Cardano's like what? I think Cardano's like, 200 if that 200 some people even say cardano is like more like 20 but like cardano is way slower than caspa all right what else can we look at we could look at finality time to finality right time to finality for caspa is a few seconds i think it's like 10 seconds cardano you have an approximate finality in like two to five minute 
But the real finale, like the real thing is about 25 minutes, almost 30 minutes for finale. So again, um, uh, Casper is way faster, magnitude faster than Cardano. It's also more secure, right? Because Casper is using a Bitcoin proof of work system as opposed to Cardano. It's really just stake weighted governance. So Casper has like that real energy proof of work um, uh, behind it. That's making it much more secure with that 51%, right? So Casper is way more secure than Cardano. Let's look at um, uh, the smart contract, uh, well, not smart contract, but deploying a coin on Casper. Casper is way faster, minimum friction, right? If you want to uh, deploy a coin on Casper, just broadcast a Genesis transaction, you know, attach an OP metadata, and then you're good. Your coin is live, right? Broadcast your Genesis transaction, your OP metadata, and you're good. Your coin is, is running, minimum friction. Just, just get it done. Ca Cardano, you have to learn. Haskis, Plutus, and trust me, I, I used to be in that ecosystem. I, I wouldn't consider myself a Cardano developer because I didn't write enough smart contract to say so. But I, I did write enough Cardano code to know that it's very difficult. It's, it's not intuitive. It's very scientific, too scientific for me, right? So you have a huge learning curve with um, uh, Haskell Plutus, right? But you also have to na navigate CIP standards, right? Plutus constraints, Cardano foundation politics. You're just trying to get a coin out there, right? A token out there. It'll be token on Cardano. Well, it's a coin. Never mind, because Cardano is also UTX. So sorry for making that mistake. But it's much harder to deploy a, co a coin on Cardano than it is to deploy a coin on um, uh, Casper. But what really did it for me, guys, is culture. That was like the final nail in the coffin. Because when I look at Cardano, and I know Cardano well because I was in that ecosystem for a while. Cardano has a very academic culture, right? Peer reviews, white papers, scientific philosophy. It's, it's like, oh my God, very slow, very rigorous, but very slow, very academic. The culture is very academic as opposed to when you look at Casper, it's more like cyberpunk rebel, right? It's more like cyberpunk rebel. Like just get out there, break shit build shit, do something significant. I feel like Casper love rebel developers like myself who are building real things and doing things that are culturally significant with their chain. Like if I put the Cityscape Street Pass on Casper, that would be some gangster ass shit. You have a street app on a blockchain built for the people. So I feel like Casper fits my culture more. It's more like a cyberpunk rebel culture as opposed to like Cardano, it's really like academic. And I got no problem with academia. It's just not my thing. <laughs> you know, I've been there, done that, but I'm, I'm not going back. So uh, that's really what did it for me. So now I put Casper at the top of my list in terms of what blockchain um, uh, to put street cred on. But here's, here's the crazy part, guys. Here's the crazy part. Like, I think it was like two nights ago. Uh, one viewer left a comment and said, hey, can you do a video on VProgs for me? And I didn't know what VProgs were, right? So I went and looked it up. I found their yellow paper and I was skimming through it. And there was a line um, uh, on a yellow paper that really just changed everything. Like everything just got like demolished after I read that line. And I'm going to read it to you. It's bullet point seven in the yellow paper of um, uh, VProgs, it says VProgs are synchronously composable without compromising their sovereignty. VProgs are synchronously composable without compromising their sovereignty. Now, when I read that, like my mind like exploded. Like, whoa, they're synchronously composable. That means VProg is basically a smart contract capability being given to Casper. That's cool, because now Casper will be able to support smart contract. But the fact that they could do instant composability, whoa, whoa. I mean, that's what Ethereum is worshipped for. Not even ICP could do that. ICP is asynchronous, and ICP does not support atomic transactions, right? So you could have partial success in ICP, 
uh, transaction and your your coin being st- could be stuck. That's a huge weakness in internet computer, by the way, that nobody talks about. The fact that it's asynchronous and not atomic, right? You could have partial success in ICP because canisters are sending messages to another, right? As opposed to Ethereum and soon Casper or another blockchain called SUI also support instant instant, instant composability. You're talking about smart contracts talking instantly to, to one another, right? Like one line, one shot. <laughs> like the amount of seamless transaction capabilities this gives you is insane. So in a way, VProg are making Casper. It's, it's kind of like fusing Bitcoin proof of work security with Ethereum smart contracts capabilities. Huge game. Like I was blown away. So now I was originally thinking of making Cityscape a multi-chain dApp where I use Casper as a cash layer. Sui is a smart contract layer and later I use Polygon for like DeFi, right? Global DeFi liquidity, right? But now I'm like, you know what? I might not even need Sui for this. I could just use Casper VProgs if if it is what if if they do achieve what they intend to achieve, right? Because it's just a yellow paper for now. It was released, I believe, September 11 of this year, and these things will take time to to to, to build. I mean, I saw one in a comment say, "Oh, VProgs will be out next year, 2020." What are you are you what are you on, man? What drug? Do you know how difficult this stuff is? I don't see VProgs being released until like 2028, in my opinion. Like I would say mid-2028 is when I think VProg will be like mainnet, right? But who knows? In any case, the next video I do, I'm going to talk about VProgs. But for now, I'm, I'm going to talk about it more in detail. because I, I do think this is a huge game changer. But for now, I just want to say that like I am putting Casper as number one uh, on a list for the street cred cryptocurrency. Uh, because it will give me everything that I need. Uh, and if 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 nothing replaces it, because I'm not moving fast, right? I move fast with internet computer, and I, I regretted it horribly. Internet computer turned out to be an absolute disaster. So I'm going to take my time with this. If I find nothing that beats Casper, I'm going to do my own performance assessment on them. And then I'm going to start writing code. It's, it's really easy, so it shouldn't be too hard. But I'm going to document how I'm doing it, how I'm publishing street cred on Casper so that developers... And entrepreneurs behind me could have a clear path or some reference point because I think that will benefit the community. In any case, that's all I have for you in this episode. Share your thoughts in the comment section and all this. This is my original story. This is this is this is coming from the heart. I'm just telling you what I'm experiencing. Like I said, I don't claim to know it all. I'm learning with you, but I want to share with share it with you so that you could see what I'm going through as a web three developer and entrepreneur. You know what to do, my misfits. Don't forget to press that like button and support me on Patreon. I also left my Casper wallet address if you want to support me because there was someone in the comment section that said he wanted to support me, uh, especially since like the developer stuff, man. Like I have to break a lot of technical things down. So any support I could get would be really appreciated. In any case, my misfits, you know what to do. I will see you next time.